my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am a mom to four. I love to homeschool, I love to read good books, and that is what I talk about a lot on this channel. So thank you for stopping by. So today's video addresses a number of questions I have gotten from you all in response to my videos on Singapore Dimensions Math. And so I will link those above. I've done a comparison video, I've done a flip through of KA and KB. What I wanna do today is talk through the manipulatives. So that question I have gotten so much and I think the reason is because the program does not come with manipulatives. It comes with a teacher's guide, a workbook, and a textbook and that's it. So it doesn't have a kit of manipulatives or anything like that. What it does have is a list at the beginning of each chapter as well as a kind of master list on their website which I will link below. And it's a rather large list and it's a bit intimidating. And so I wanted to share what we actually used last year. And so I think it's kind of a blessing that I came to the Dimensions program third in finding a good kindergarten program for my son because it didn't give me much time to plan and prep and collect a bunch of stuff. I just was forced to really use what I had, minus one thing, I purchased one thing, but it was good. I was able to do exactly what I needed to do. So I'm gonna share that with you today. Before I hop into the manipulatives, I want to show you one quick thing in the teacher's guide. And so at the beginning of each chapter, it goes through some things for the teacher, but then there's a whole page labeled materials, storybooks, tactile materials. Like this one is linking cubes and bears, beans, other counters. And then this black line masters. And so black line masters is basically just a resource page online on the Singapore Math website where you can download the different flashcards, the different manipulatives that are asked for at the beginning of the different chapters. So like for instance, the different numbers, how they're spelled and things like that, as well as like 10 plus seven, or the 10 frames and the 20 frames and recognizing the numbers. And so all of these little flashcards, I just printed off of there. I downloaded the PDF, printed on cardstock, cut it out, and they're used a lot during the first part of the lessons. So I highly recommend doing that. That's kind of the first thing. And then as for manipulatives, the one thing I bought was these Unifix cubes. I'll just hold them up. So the Unifix cubes are, are these. And so basically they're the ones that clip and unclip. They come in a ton of different colors. I think I got the biggest box I could because I also use them as play toys for my twins. They like to play with these. It gets to be a bit of a mess, but they're bigger than say Legos, so they're good for their little hands. But they're excellent for math manipulatives. The reason is, is because you can you can grow them and build them and break them apart. So we did have the Matthew C blocks. The difference there is you can't take apart a three block and make it one plus two equals three. And so an example of how some of these are used is, for instance, when you're trying to figure out the different combinations that make five. So what you could do is you use these these blocks and you can be four plus one equals five. Or you can take this here and be three plus two equals five. Or you could switch it and be three plus two equals five and just use the different colors. And so they can see the different combos that three plus two or two plus three or four plus one or one plus four. And they can kind of play with these and see a very visual hands-on representation of that idea. So we have loved these. I feel like we use these probably the most of all the manipulatives I'm gonna show you today. So I highly recommend getting those. I don't think they were that expensive on Amazon. I will leave a link below for what we got, but there's a lot of different options on there. So don't feel like you have to use just these ones. So those were the first things. Then also the program calls a lot for different counting things. Like it said, beans or bears. And we just happened to have the counting bear set, which, which I feel like a lot of families already have these. We had them for, um, kind of preschool work. And so these are excellent though, because they are just the manipulatives and we can work through two bears in a circle plus one bear in a circle equals move the bears all to the circle and makes three. Things like that. So the bears are nice. The bears are nice for making patterns. The bears are nice for a number of different things whenever they call for like a counting object. We had these. Another thing that they asked for, especially I think once we got into the shapes section, was these pattern blocks. Um, I'll hold them up. But I feel like a lot of families also have these pattern blocks. They have different shapes to make, like a flower or stuff like that, and you can talk about the different names for all the different shapes. And so this was 
requested in the program. I don't feel like you have to have it. You might be able to find a printable to teach it the same way without having to have the pattern blocks, but we had them, so we used them. Another thing we used, maybe not as much, were these rods. I forget what they're called, but these rods are really nice too. It's because they're colored and you can set up the actual equations with the pluses, minuses, and equals, and you can use these to match with the numbers for number recognition based on how many rods. So it has some extra stuff like that. So we did use these occasionally, just not quite as much as some of the other manipulatives. But again, I had those on hand, so we used them. Um, another thing we used that I don't have with me anymore because I ended up selling my Right Start Math manipulatives is the wooden shapes, and I'll put a picture here. And this was really nice for when we got to the shapes section, especially the 3D shapes when you're talking like cones and cylinders and things like that to have them actually be able to touch what a cone looks like instead of see a 3D representation of a cone on a paper, that's harder than having the shapes. So I think I will probably purchase like a wooden shapes kit for my daughter when she gets to that part of, I think it was KB or the end of KA. So I really do recommend those, that was helpful. And then like I mentioned when I was showing you the teacher's manual, sometimes they they suggested books, and we would often get them from the library. This one is one we had, the 10 apples up on top, when it was in the kind of count to 10 part of the curriculum. And so they have all these recommendations, and it's great to use. If you have it, I didn't feel like I needed to rush out and buy all of the books. I don't feel like it made too much of a difference, or I could kind of modify a different book I had. So I wasn't too worried about that. So basically, I feel like I was able to take what I had and work it into what they were asking for. Either they were asking directly for counting bears or pattern blocks, or they were asking for something slightly different that I was able to use what I had. And so I feel like you don't have to buy the whole list. Uh, that's just my opinion. I feel like my son was able to really understand the concept perfectly fine with what we had. And really what we had was like four, four main manipulative sets, some flashcards, some books, so please let me know if you have any other recommendations on manipulatives, manipulatives for kindergarten in general, or the dimensions program specifically. Thank you for stopping by and watching the video. Please consider liking it, subscribing if you aren't already subscribed, and you find these kinds of videos helpful. So that is all I have for today. So have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, take care.